Well, the start list with the most names for the champs is the men's 1500. I've just had to try to count quickly. I think there's over 50 names here. Um, so that, I imagine that'll be four heats of 13, 14, 12, 13. And then if you have a final of 12, that means either three from each heat or two and then four fastest losers. So that's... That's tough. Two or three from twelve. I doubt they'll have more than four heats. So yeah. Okay. So challenged. this is one. This is one not to miss if you're going to tune in. That the men's fifteen hundred heats and final um, athletes with the qualifying time. It's three thirty-five this time, George. We've got Charlie Grice, Josh Kerr. Uh, we've got Whiteman, Jake Hayward, Piers Copeland, all with the time already. Um, again, you could pick any number of athletes um, which would make a really strong team for GB. Um, the heats are going to play a role. We know how unpredictable sometimes the 1500 meters can be. For me, Josh Kerr looks amazingly strong at the moment. That great time he ran in the States not long ago. Um, so I've gone for him as a winner and a strong winner. And then I've gone Whiteman and, and I couldn't choose one other from a whole list of names. Um, Kat, who have you got here? And then we'll go for, for George's rundown. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the same as me, actually. I think Kerr will definitely win. Um, and then probably Whiteman. Um, but it is just such a big field that it's, it is almost impossible to see. And to look through all of them and work out who's in form at the moment is too big a job. So it's... <laughs> I think wait until we've got a finals list for this one. <laughs> yeah, I should mention um, a few weeks ago, our interviewee Tom Mortimer is in the start list for the 15 and the five. Not sure if he's going to do both, George, but hopefully he can, again, play a role on, and play a factor in the heats at, at least and make the final. Who, who have you got to, to win this one? Uh, I, yeah, I agree with you. I think Josh Kerr's, yeah, yeah I mean... They'll have an extra incentive as well, being that, well, uh, Chariot didn't make the team, did he, for Kenya? So this is an absolutely wide open event. Obviously, Inge Britson's probably the favourite now. Um, Ollie Hall from Australia, McSwain, uh, others as well. But you know, whoever makes this team, particularly, I think, Kerr and Whiteman are going to be real contenders for medals, if, yeah, if not more than that. Um, so, yeah, I think Kerr and Whiteman will be fine. I think... Charlie Grice around 3:33 earlier this year, but I'm not. You know, I'm not. He worries me tactically. I think he was like fifth fastest in the world going into the trials for Doha 2019 and didn't make the team. Um, so I, I've gone Jake Haywood, but yeah, I think again yeah, it's going to be interesting. This is one where if Haywood finishes third and Grice finishes fourth, who do you take? Who are British Athletic going to back for that last spot? Um, that's sort of why I wish we had the US standard rather than, or US setup so it didn't kind of become kind of someone's opinion but yeah I think Kerr will win I think Wyman will be second and Hayward third but as I said the heats are going to be tough easily get tripped and then that's it that's your race run so it's going to be interesting definitely You'd have to think in one of these races that there's going to be someone who we've not mentioned at all who is going to finish strongly and finish second or third and, and possibly yeah. make the team and, and it'll be a surprise just because it's there are so many names here and they are yeah. all such strong runners and it is such an unpredictable event and the heats and everything that the, there must be some surprises I would think over the weekend at least yeah yeah I agree so from uh, one's just outside in the men's 1500 uh, James West has run 335.5 earlier this year um, Neil Gourley is just outside as well and he made the team for Doha uh, George Mills uh, Josh Lay both kind of within a couple of seconds as well so yeah there's plenty of names that could cause an upset or certainly cause an upset in the heats and knock someone out that was maybe one of the favourites Yeah I think in these kind of 800s and 1500s I think the third spot being up for selection is in some ways good you imagine if Josh Kerr gets tripped in the heats and misses out on even getting into the final and then we absolutely can't take him to the Olympics. It's that 
having that third spot, I think, is for exactly those things to yeah. give, you know, in most probability, if you finish third, you're probably going to the Olympics. But it's not fair to go to the Olympics if one of the top names got tripped totally out of there. You know, I mean, you can say stay out of trouble, but sometimes it's just not possible and it's not your fault. And so I think keeping that third spot is kind of important to, you know, I don't like that about the US trials if somebody, because someone got tripped in the US trials and I just thought, had that been a favourite, you know, you saw her try and come back into the race, but you don't stand a chance from 20 metres back. And so, yeah, I I still like that we have that kind of safety net for the to make sure we send the best team. Yeah, I think the, the way the US do it, it makes it really exciting to watch because there's just no, like, no doubt, you know, that like you see when those, first three cross the line like they, they know they're going to the olympics whereas it, yeah, if jk would finish his third here he'll cross the line thinking uh i should go but might not um but yeah it is risky like you saw i think it was was it rio where kendra harrison broke the world record in the hurdles like a week after not making the us team um and they can maybe afford it a little bit more because they still got a one two three i think in that us in that hurdles without the world record holder but yeah, if we, you'd be pretty gutted if you were Kerr or Whiteman and they didn't make the team because of getting tripped or, yeah, whatever. So, yeah, it, I think it is probably the, the best way to send the best team, but then it can kind of, it can be a bit controversial when maybe if a big name finishes fourth behind a less big name finishing third, who do you take? Yeah. Um, I always think you should, if, if they got beaten fair and square and there was no tripping or anything going on, then I think take the third. But yeah, I doubt British Athletes will do it like that. I, yeah, we'll wait and see.